and ice cream for all the times that you proofread my papers and for all the times that you dealt with the school stress. I'm so grateful for all your steadiness, support, and care during this long, long process. You are my best friend, and I could not have done this without you. Thank you, Andrew. This is for Heather Schmidt Tigen, and this is from Kirby. When I first thought about seminary, my wife Heather and I were going through a church split because of some questionable theology from the senior pastor. Heather felt that I needed to really be grounded in the word. God was reaffirming me this in my own devotional time. To say my wife put me through is an understatement. We started the undertaking of school with little knowledge of the ongoing sacrifice it would mean for her. We had just adopted our first son. Being a teacher, we were both busy, but she would selflessly give me evenings and many Saturdays and Sundays to get the work I needed to be done. Then we adopted again. We were blessed with a newborn baby. Thinking we were rock star parents, neither of us took a parental leave from our jobs thinking we could make it work, not too bright to say the least. Heather didn't just support me financially, which was huge, but the biggest sacrifice my wife made was with her time. Now that I'm done with school, I'm trying to pay her back for all the time she gave up for me, Kirby. It's become painfully clear that uh, I have been missing out on a, on a resource that our school has for our seminary news. I had no idea there were so, more, so many editors in our community. I am constantly in need of editors. So all those spouses that were helping with papers, please come see me afterward. I have a job for you. <clears throat> One of the things uh, that I have always appreciated and loved about our school uh, is the variety uh, that we see in our students. Variety in ages, ethnicity, backgrounds, denominations, um, even, even their station in life. We have people that are 17 that come to study with us in our Samuel program, our one-year program for high school grads. We have people that uh, have studied with us in their 60s and even 70s, um, and, uh, and people from all parts of the world. And uh, I love that aspect, and you're going to see that tonight as our graduates uh, come forward and share their testimonies. But what I hope that you hear most of all is that these are men and women who have said, Lord, I'm ready to do your will. I am ready to go to tough places. And they have, they have spent years here, whether it's one or 13, 14 by some, um, to to complete their studies, and, uh, and we're very proud of them, and I think you're going to be thrilled when you hear these testimonies today. So we'll start those in <clears throat> just a moment. I want to recognize uh, we have two uh, students that are getting their Samuel, that have completed the Samuel program this year. One of them uh, couldn't be with us tonight, um, uh, Jacob McCulloch, um, but Josh Barnes, Joshua Barnes is here. Would you stand up so we can recognize you? <clears throat> Thank you, Josh. It's been great having you on our campus this year. So um, I know this is the time that you've been waiting for. I do want to give you a little bit of instructions, uh, graduates, um, as you come up. And uh, I'm shamelessly borrowing a, a page from Dr. McNaughton's book here. Uh, when they give their seminary day reports in March, he has some little things to help them 
uh, with their testimony. Because we have so many, we've given them a certain amount of time. Um, if you see me hold this up, it says wrap it up. Uh, that means it's time for you to, to, to end your... If you see this one has the little uh, frowny face and then the person headed for their chair, that means you need to sit down now, okay? Uh, so just <coughs> having said that, uh, you guys, I think you know the order. If you would, go ahead and uh, if you know that you're the next person, if you could make your way up to the hot seat right here, um, and that way we'll, we'll save time. But I think, Callum, are we, we're starting with you, right? So come on up and share. My name is Calum Dillard, and if you can pronounce that correctly, you're doing better than half the staff and faculty here. <laughs> I didn't, I wasn't sure if I was going to say anything, but then Barry kind of <laughs> pushed me over the edge. <laughs> this weekend is uh, very special to me. Uh, this weekend represents three years of um, somewhat hard work and God's faithfulness in my life to bring me to bring me here to sustain me and teach me so much about Himself. But this weekend is extra special because tomorrow I get to graduate alongside my best friend. I had no idea when I came here who God would bring into my life. I'm grateful for these three years getting to know you. This school will forever remind me of our late night chats in the library, going up to the kitchen here to, get, to look at bread together and get some tasty treats, <clears throat> as well as sitting beside each other in the many classes that we shared together. You've also always been such an encouragement to me throughout the highs and lows of seminary. So thank you, Russ, for your friendship to me. <laughs> I look forward to seeing where you end up, and I hope that we can maintain our friendship for years to come. Thank you. I grew up just uh, down the road in Boness, but I ended up in Daysland, which is about four hours from here. And uh, my parents couldn't be here today because Coincidentally, my brother is graduating from his doctoral program for in Kansas City. <laughs> and so <laughs> I told my parents, you, you better go to that one, <laughs> you know. But my brother and I weren't the sharpest tools in the toolbox uh, in school growing up. And I said, did you ever imagine that we would uh, both be, you'd have to choose who, which graduate you're going to go to, a master's and a doctorate program out of Brad and I, <laughs> you know. And uh, my mom agreed that she never imagined that she would have to <laughs> have <laughs> to make that choice. Um, there's just there's so much to say, and uh, so I'm going to say it. Uh, there, th there are some in the evangelical community that don't believe that formal education is important, and uh, they they say things, and I've heard things say that seminary won't will won't make you into a man of heart, and in your ministry you need to be a man of heart. And uh, they, they have this idea that it quenches the Holy Spirit. Um, when God brought me to seminary, I discovered that this wasn't the case. At Canadian Southern Baptist Seminary, I've seen a lot of passion. As I took courses, it became clear to me that, that people who uh, came clear to me that, that the people here in seminary uh, don't quench the Spirit. And uh, people who believe this are deceived. What's worse is that they don't have the fundamentals to, to uh, understand when they're misinterpreting scripture. Now, I'm not saying that I'm all set now, that I've figured everything out. It's, it's far from the truth. I need to be vigilant with the tools that I've learned that uh, God has equipped me through these professors and, and uh, staff. Um, everything I've learned has been just so useful, and it's amazing um, some of you who have taken time out of your life to come to seminary full time, you will, you will um, be seeing very quickly how, how much you'll use these courses and ministries if you have already haven't seen how you use them in your daily life. But um, also for me, uh, just being in ministry at the time, in pastoral ministry, 
just I remember reading a chapter and almost walking out the door into the, the church and starting to use it instantly. And uh, it was powerful. Um, I had a bunch of courses that spoke a lot to me and, and some that surprised me. And w why do I have to take this course? <laughs> you know, this is, this is so, it, it's not necessary for me to take effective ministry management. <laughs> but effective ministry management, I learned very quickly, was I could have, some of the problems in our church split could have been solved so easily if uh, things had been formalized on paper. And, uh, and so just going through these courses, I learned very quickly that, that every course was valuable. Um, some of them weren't, were a lot uh, challenging to take, but all of them were equally valuable and all of them are being used. Um, I can't go into it all literally, um, every course that God's using. Through my time at seminary, I've seen that, that the professors and staff are men and women of heart. And, and passion. They have not quenched or stifled the Spirit, and it is clear that the Holy Spirit is very much present in this place. Thanks. Yeah, um, my name is Jesse Dole. I've had the unique experience of spending most of my seminary education as a face on a screen in the back of class as an online student. So that's probably how most of you know me, actually. Um, so this weekend is my graduating weekend, and it is also the end of my career in television, so <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> um, a number of years ago, I uh, was serving as an associate pastor in a church, felt God's clear call in my life that he had something else for me, that I was going to be in pastoral ministry, but I didn't know what role or what path to take there because I knew I wasn't who I needed to be to take that step in my life yet. And I didn't know where I needed to start working. Um, so I, I thought of seminary. I went to a lot of different schools, um, but I found at the end of every class, I was just not excited enough about what was going on to dedicate that amount of time and energy <laughs> into accomplishing, to getting here today. Um, I just wasn't excited enough, and I remember I took a few online courses here, um, but I remember uh, two years ago I was in spiritual leadership um, in the school, which is a course I was taking, and I was convinced coming in with my nerves, wondering if this was it or if I'd have to switch schools again and move all my transcripts and all that sort of stuff, um, but I felt God's clear sense and call um, from that weekend and from what the Lord was doing that weekend that this is where he wanted me to be. And it has been a place over these years that has been intentional in preparing me and equipping me to be useful in practical ways in serving and helping um, a local church. And I'm so thankful for that. And I have um, the pleasure at this point in my life, two years later, um, I started a pastorate two months ago in the Hepburn Gospel Church um, near where I'm at. And it has been a wonderful opportunity for me. I'm so thankful for my time here and for those of you who have invested so much in me to prepare me for this. Um, and I'm so thankful for the way God has worked everything together. So thank you so much. Um, oh, yeah. And I'm uh, on June 2nd, I'm going to be installed at this church in Hepburn. So if you happen to find yourself in the Saskatoon area, come on down. You're, in, you're welcome to come on out. <laughs> thank you. I'm Beth Delart, and um, I'm not as much of a jokester as my husband, Caleb, much more <laughs> reflective and sentimental, which I think will soon be very, very obvious. Um, <laughs> so originally, I thought of seminary as a means, um, a means to live in Canada, because I'm from the U.S., and I felt God was calling me to move here to be part of what he's doing in church planning in Calgary, so I needed a legal way to live here. I thought, oh, I can go to seminary, um, but I have seen during my last few years um, that I really needed this. Um, so some of the tangible things that I've learned from the classroom, because um, I feel like I really have learned so many things. Um, the importance of ensuring that the Bible is the filter for every aspect of our worldview um, and how to do that. And um, the fact that other things in our world may shift, the perspectives and um, how we determine our worldview, our source for that. But I know the Bible is never going to change, and we can rely on that. 
um, I've learned how understanding the Bible um, properly, interpreting it correctly, um, can address a lot of the hangups that people who aren't believers have about Christianity, um, and so the benefit um, of that. Um, the way that God can use hard situations um, to strengthen his church, um, and how we don't have to be afraid of those things. Um, and how to put hands and feet and words to the burden um, I had for the loss. I, I had this burden, but I feel now um, really equipped to have conversations that um, lead people closer to Jesus. And I could go on. Um, a few weeks ago, a friend asked me what my favorite class was at seminary, and I told her all the classes from each of the professors and what I liked about each of those classes. <laughs> um, so there's lots that I've learned. Um, but many often say that um, while the academic lessons are really important, it's the lessons that God teaches you alongside um, seminary that have the bigger impact. Um, so some of those. Um, I have also said during my time here that it's really hard to go very long here without being reminded about the importance of um, cultivating our relationship with God while we're here. Um, and I know that every single person on the faculty and staff would say that if we don't leave with a deeper love for God and um, people and his word, then we haven't really gained anything at all. Um, and I've learned that this wasn't just an opportunity for me to increase in my understanding and knowledge and um, or even just to grow my personal walk, but this is an opportunity and experience to be stewarded um, and to be given away um, for the good of the church. And um, I've learned here how to be family with the people of God in a way that I never have before, um, how to yeah, how to be family because we are family and um, part of God's family. Um, and I think this place is really special in that. Um, and then personally, um, God has whole, like nailed this down in my head during this time here that he is not out to get us. He is not a spiteful God. Um, he is just and good and he's kind and he's a helper. Um, and as his child, I can rest in that. Um, and so a few weeks ago in the final push of all the long checklist of things that need to be done to get to this spot right here. I was like way down, excited for what's next, just ready to be done. And I was just convinced that like, I was just gonna be ready. Um, but all my life, I have been sentimental at endings. And so final exam, theology, writing the last words, I stopped <laughs> I was like, this is it. These are the last words I'm ever writing in seminary. And I was like, what is wrong with me? I should be excited, I'm done, I can breathe, but of course, and said I was sentimental. But I think that's because I feel so privileged to have had this opportunity. Um, I feel full and rich in the best way. Um, and this was a gift that I didn't know I needed. Um, but I just kind of want to share with you what those last words um, were about that I wrote in my time in seminary. Um, and it has been sort of a theme throughout my time here. These words might be familiar for those of you who are there a chapel a few weeks ago. Um, and it, that is how important the end of the story is. And because we know what happens at the end, because we know that Jesus is coming back to make all things new, um, we can go through this life with confidence and hope. Um, and in the meantime, because we know that Jesus is the only one, no one else, nothing else, um, Jesus is the only one who defeated sin and death and Satan. He is the only one who is worthy of our worship forever and ever. Um, like Beth, I also came here thinking seminary was a means to an end. Um, my husband and I felt called here to church plant, and seminary was my way to live here like Beth. In fact, when Beth and I were connected while she was praying about coming, I'm like, just come through school. Like, it's fine. You can church plant. Um, but same as Beth, I'm so glad that the Lord cares just about, just as much about the work that he wants to do. Um, in me as he does about the work he wants to do through me. And um, that's kind of what I've learned here during my time. Um, God has humbled me with his gentle kindness um, as I've learned to submit to the authority of Scripture and to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And he's strengthened me in my walk um, and in my ministry as I've learned to fight for truth and to love with courage. He's provided me and my family in ways I could have never dreamed of He's proven to me time and time again that his promises are trustworthy, and he's a good shepherd. Um, seminary is by far the hardest thing that I've ever had to do, but I'm so thankful for God's leading me here, and specifically to this school. Um, there really is no other, and it's an honor um, to be here as a graduand. 
I don't even know if I'm saying that word right, but whatever. Um, I just wanted to say thank you um, to the faculty and staff. Thank you for modeling what it means to walk humbly in service to our God. Um, I feel like you've perfectly navigated the tension between academia and real life, and I feel like you guys just get it. Um, and it's such a joy to learn under you and study under you. I wouldn't have wanted to have, to have done that with any other group of people. Um, and you've exhibited your love and care far beyond the walls of the classroom here, and I'm so thankful for that. To my fellow graduates and students, um, there's just something special about seeking the Lord together. You challenge me every day to love God more, to love his word more, and to love people more. And you've helped shape me and mold me. And I've truly found friends for life here. Um, thank you for your sharpening. And to my family, I'm not going to look out for this one because they're here and I'll cry. Okay, but to my family, I don't get to um, thank you publicly. Uh, but thank you for your, uh, I don't get to thank you publicly a lot, but thank you for your constant support and encouragement. I am who I am today because of you, and I'm honored to be your daughter and your wife. Um, and I just wanted to finish with a scripture that the Lord brought me kind of midway through seminary, kind of at that point when you think like, this is never going to end, I'm not going to make it. But this just became like an anchor for my soul, and um, I just wanted to share it with you. It's from Philippians chapter 3, and it says, My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, sufferings, being conformed to his death, assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from among the dead. Not that I've already reached the goal or I'm already fully mature, but I make every effort to take hold of it because I have also been taken hold of by Jesus Christ. Brothers, I do not consider myself to have been taken hold of, of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching towards what's ahead, I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Um, would it be said of each of us that our goal is to know God, not just to know him academically, but to really know his heart, um, to share in his sufferings and to hope in the resurrection, reaching forward only to the promised Jesus Christ. Hi, I'm Holly, for those of you don't, who don't know me. Um, I'm originally from the West Coast and probably moved to Alberta kicking and screaming, um, <laughs> which is probably no secret for any of the professors here on the first day, too. Um, but it has turned into home. And one of the things that I really learned here at the seminary is how to persevere, because this school does train people for tough places. Um, even if those tough places are your own. Um, <laughs> I, always, I always cry. I leak. It's what I do. Um, so I was able to get the support that I needed to have different medical diagnoses in Alberta that I couldn't get in BC, um, which allowed me to have my dog. So if you see a little nine-pound bundle of cuteness and trouble, her name is Zoe, and I love her, and she makes me happy. Um, but it's also given me a little bit more direction in um, how I'm going to serve people. And a lot of that is going to look like going to those hard places where nobody else is willing to go. Walking alongside those who have been hurt and abused by church leaders who should not have been. Um, those people who have been taken advantage of in a place that should be safe. Um, I feel like God has called me to say, no, I want you to make this what it should be. It should be a safe place. Um, this seminary has been a safe place for me. There have been countless people. Um, Sue? Um, when I didn't think I could keep going. Mom? The <laughs> phone calls sometimes multiple times a day. Um, you'd talk me down. You'd talk me through. Um, and the friends of mine who just would let me rant, or they'd just be there for a hug. Um, having neighbors where I could text them and be like, I really need a hug right now. And then she'd come on, pop up right on over. Thanks, Alicia. Um, and just being able to have that community. Um, it has been hard. I have wanted to give up on the church. Um, 
but in persevering through a lot of this, I feel like I can be one of the reasons why it's better and why it is a safe place because it needs to be a safe place. And so I can't do it alone, obviously, um, but I want to walk alongside those who need it. Um, so I wanted to, here we go. Um, never thought I would understand how much the Old Testament actually impacts my heart as well as God's heart for his people. Um, so thank you, Dr. Peacock, for sharing all of your wisdom in that. And the verse I want to leave you with, there's, there's tons, but it's hard to pick, um, is Isaiah 25, 4 through 5. For you have been a stronghold to the poor person, a stronghold for the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm and shade from heat. When the breath of the violent is like a storm against a wall, like a heat in a dry land, you will subdue the uproar of barbarians as the shade of a cloud cools the heat of the day. So he will silence the song of the violent. My name is Samuel Bernard. I'm from Haiti. Um, I went to school in Saskatchewan for three years where I, where I learned English among a lot of Mennonites. <laughs> and also, when my wife was, at that point, just my friend and helping me with my papers. So when I done in Saskatchewan, I came here, and first day in class, one of my favorite, one of my favorite um, professors says, when we look in the book of Joshua, and I was like, okay, I'm in trouble here. My accent gonna mix with Southern accent, with Haitian accent, with Mennonite accent. I'm just like, I don't know what's gonna happen here. But you know what? Um, it's been awesome. And I was uh, in the church in Eldry, and I said to myself, whatever I'm gonna learn here, I'm gonna apply it in that church. And guess what? It worked. Everything you learn and you put it into application, it does work for me. And, but I had to make a big decision. I text the president. He was in the States. He texts back. And he called me, and he prayed with me. And he, he's still praying for me about the decision I, I had to make. And I was like, wow. And also, I shared that before, but having Dr. Peacock sitting around here with us, a, f a few boys, just talking about vehicles, like pieces of vehicles, and it's not only in the classroom, but also just being around uh, outside of the classroom and chat with us. And, and I learned a lot here, but also um, being in ministry with two of my professors. Like now I'm a pastor of a church here with my preaching professor, which my Old Testament and Hebrew professor. So now we are together. And the awkward thing is that for me, I have to call them, for example, Dr. Watson and Dr. Peacock. But when I'm in church with them, we kind of like sort of colleague. Um, I, I don't know if I need to say um, Dr. or Watson or Peacock. I don't know what to say. So <laughs> usually I just ignore saying their names and just keep it safe. <laughs> So I had so much fun here, and as I learned how to open God's word and preach it to people and help them to understand what God means and how to draw them closer to God and how to take God's word that was written thousands of years ago and put it in two words that people today can understand it and preach it and people can feel touched by God. And I well, would say that the major thing that I learned in the school here. And thank you. Looking back over the last four and a half years, I'm very thankful that God brought me here and for everything that he's done and taught me while I've been here. It's hard to sum it all up, but if I have to sum it up, up, I would say I've come to love God more, I've come to love people more, and I've come to love um, his word more. 
I've come to love God more as I've experienced his presence in this community, um, as I've seen his daily provision um, and been prodded in very gentle ways, pushing me to trust him more. And um, I remember sitting in one particular class and we were going over the whole salvation story from uh, creation, fall, rescue, and restoration. And just being overwhelmed by God's incredible love for us, that he would put this plan in motion to save us and rescue us and restore us. And I was overwhelmed by God's love. And that was just one class that happened over and over again. Um, so through the gospel story, I've learned to love him more. And I've also come to love people more. And I've been challenged to love people more, particularly by sharing the gospel. Um, there's such a heart here for church planning and, and evangelism and just sharing that, that love that God has for us. And so I've been stretched in new ways in that area. And it's taken me out of my comfort zone, but I, I needed to be taken out of my comfort zone, and which is good. And um, I'm just thankful for the people here who have pushed me in that, in that way and supported me in that. I've come to love God's word more as well. And God's word is, was already very precious to me before I even came here, but that has only been reaffirmed and strengthened during my time here. I'll not forget just um, how refreshing the word of God can be. And for me, this was illustrated most clearly in my experience with Greek class. Uh, my Greek class would happen Tuesday afternoons, and usually I'd go in very tired and exhausted. And I was always amazed that three hours later, I would walk out and I'd feel refreshed and energized again. And I could go on and do whatever I needed to do. And I, that was the word of God, just spending time in the word. Psalm 19, verse 7 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. And that's been definitely been my experience here. I'm so thankful that God brought me here. And I want to say thank you to the faculty and staff for um, just their hard work in creating this community here and in investing in, in all of us. Thank you for the love and care and support you've shown along the way and the opportunity that you've given us to, to learn and just grow in this environment. I'm also so thankful for the many people that God has brought um, a lot with me along the way, um, brought into my life. Um, he's just blessed me with so many friends here and um, so many people who have cheered me on and supported me in different ways. And so I want to say thank you to them as well and to the, the people that have come out tonight to celebrate with me. I'm just so honored by that. And um, yeah, just thank you for coming out. And I want to finish with the words of Psalm 117, which says, Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Russ Falk as the, the board says. Uh, and it's hard to believe, but I guess I've been here for six and a half years now at the school, not in the MDiv program uh, fully for six and a half years, but as a student at the school for six and a half years. And, you know, for not wanting to come to this school, uh, I, I really had no desire to come to this place, as, as some of you know. Uh, coming here in many ways has, has been like the cat's meow. Uh, in, in that, it's been outstanding. Uh, it's been so much more than, than I could have hoped for or asked for. Uh, and. And I think because of that, leaving is going to be really hard. Uh, being here for a long time, loving this place way more than I thought it would, uh, and, and leaving is going to be difficult, uh, in part because there's so many special memories that are associated with this place. Uh, so my wife and I, we'd only been married for uh, about four or five months before we moved up here, so most of our married life has been right here on this hill. Uh, we came here newlyweds with, with no kids, and now we have two kids. Uh, so I think that, that this place is always going to hold a, a very unique uh, and special place in, in our hearts for that. Uh, as many other people have, have mentioned before, and, and it really goes without saying, but probably needs to be said again, uh, I want to thank the, the faculty, uh, the staff, the professors. Um, uh, learned so much from, from all of you. Uh, I, I think there's been each professor here, I, I think I can honestly say that I've learned so much from your classes. Uh, from your from from interactions with you guys, uh, I definitely wouldn't be who I am today 
if it wasn't for the professors here at this school and for their investment in the lives of, of me and just of the students in general. Um, so I want to thank you for that. Uh, it, you know, it's not just their, their lectures. It's not like this is school where you have your professor for two or three hours during the day and then, you know, they're locked up in their office studying or grading or whatever it is. Uh, but so many conversations in, informally in the hallways, uh, knocking on professor's office, uh, they always have this open door policy and they don't mind if you disturb them while they're grading something or uh, getting ready for class. And I've just so appreciated that. Uh, that's been so uh, meaningful. And also learning from their ministry experience. Uh, they're so open and, and candid uh, with us students about uh, just about their ministry experiences and what we can learn from them. Uh, and I think I also appreciate how the professors do what they can to help us as students avoid certain ministry pitfalls and, and mistakes. Uh, it, it's almost like, in my perspective, it's almost like the professors, they see us as, as young seminary students, and it's like they say, you know, I, I've been out there before, I know what the reality is, I know what the pitfalls and the dangers and the traps are, so let me help you circumnavigate them, let me help you avoid them, and hopefully you guys can go beyond me in my ministry. And that's what the professors seem to be doing in a lot of ways, and I'm just so appreciative uh, of them for that. Um, uh, again, you know, thinking, uh, thinking about leaving here after such a long time, it, it, it's weird. Um, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're in the academic circle, so big words are a thing. Discombobulating is, is maybe the word that I would use uh, to, to describe that. And that it's, it's just, it's strange, it, it's kind of confusing, and yet it's a necessary step. To, to leave a place like this, isn't it? Students aren't brought here for the sake of being here for their whole lives, but they're brought here for a season of time in hopes that they will eventually go out into the world and uh, do what God has called them to. Uh, so, uh, you know, leaving's unnerving because on the one hand, has the school equipped me? Yeah, uh, absolutely, the school's equipped me. Do I feel prepared going uh, from the school? No, not at all. Uh, don't feel prepared at all to, to leave this place. Uh, in some ways, maybe uh, I've never been scuba diving or uh, never been... Uh, parachuting, but maybe it would be somewhat like that in that, you know, you can learn all the theory that you want on the ground above the water in the safety of, uh, of a flat surface, but, you know, a scuba diver needs to put on their gear and go underwater. They need to dive in. Someone who's going parachuting, you need to step out of the plane. You need to jump out. And, and in a lot of ways, I feel like uh, that's, uh, that's kind of the next step is taking a step of faith, a step of trust, not knowing what's going to happen, but stepping out and uh, seeing that, yeah, you know, God's going to be faithful and, and God's going to do something. Um, th there's a lot of things that I'm going to miss about this school, uh, but maybe the thing I'm going to miss most is actually the social hub of our school. Um, the, our school has an amazing social, social hub for those of you who've, who've never been to it. Uh, it it's not the classrooms. It, it's not the hallways. It's not the gym. Uh, it's a library. Good evening. For those who don't know who I am, my name is Sam Augustine. It is a pleasure to be the last student to share tonight, as I have been studying here since January of 2005. I remember when I was visiting the Canadian National Baptist Convention and I was given a tour by Anna and Kyle Martin. I felt that God wanted me to come and study here. Still, becoming a student, again, was a bit of a transition. After taking my first exam that first semester, I was called to Dr. Richard Blackaby's office. Other than being the seminary president at the time, he was also teaching spiritual leader, the spiritual leadership class. In that meeting, he asked me if everything was okay, and then asked me a few questions from the exam. I answered them, and then he told me he knew what my problem was. He said, Sam, you're an exam choker. I, I didn't know what to take uh, by that. He said that I knew the material, but probably didn't know how to write it out. He had come to this realization as he showed me that I failed my exam. And as he showed me that, I noticed that I spelt my name wrong. <laughs> Three letters. I spelt S-M-A. That is why last week, I was surprised that I was awarded the Blackaby Spiritual Leadership Award. <laughs> it seemed ironic, considering that that was my first failed exam. Over the years, I hope to have improved as a student. And as Dr. Richard pointed out, 
Hopefully I know the material that was taught to me to apply to life and ministry. And for that, now I would like to thank my professors. I have uh, my lovely assistant here to help me as I have gifts for my, for my profs, for uh, Dr. Sharping and Dr. Morris. Even though I have not been one of your students, I am always glad when we get professors from the States to come up north here to Canada to teach. With my connections, I have a little welcome gift for both of you here. There is a good chance that the seminary will never have a challenged student like me. But just in case, these other gifts might help out my professors in motivating those individuals. For Dr. Susan Booth, I leave behind a package of testaments. Uh, she's our evangelism professor. And so it's a, give them to her students to encourage them to meet people and share both mint and gospel. So, you know, you have bad breath, you need a mint and Jesus. <laughs> For Dr. Steve Booth, as he taught biblical Greek, he often used the imagery of going through the fog, as our material from Dr. Mounts uh, describes how difficult learning Greek can be. So I leave in his office a fog machine. <laughs> for Professor uh, Elaine, uh, <laughs> thank you for teaching me that, English that the English language is complex. So I give you a mug to show off the importance of <laughs> punctuation. Uh, for Dr. Steve Parsons, uh, biblical archaeology will be more exciting uh, <laughs> will be more exciting to learn when you point out uh, that you are our version of Indiana Jones. <laughs> but you have two bull whips because you're just that much better. For uh, Dr. Cobb, it was a very surprise to, to see that you're here. Uh, as you taught uh, in the past our, our uh, theology classes here, it has been one of the most difficult and challenging uh, classes. And, and so I, I found this on the internet, and uh, we <laughs> it was uh, what a seminarian, what people think that seminarians do. Um, at the end of it all, it says what we actually do is do a lot of research and study. Uh, th so, yeah, we <laughs> want to say thank you for uh, the many years that you've taught us uh, in that. <laughs> to, uh, to Dr. Don, uh, for those students that might need visual help in uh, counseling or conflict resolution, here is a uh, rock'em sock'em. <laughs> to uh, Dr. Glenn Watson, who's our uh, preaching professor, you might encounter a soft-spoken preaching student in your class. Uh, so for you to help them, uh, here's a portable karaoke machine. Dr. Dan Morgan, uh, as our uh, church planning professor, for many years you have tried to persuade me into church planting. And even though I would resist in some of your class projects, unfortunately I still maintain a lot of those friendships that I gained from those exercises. I made a gift for you that might have convinced me to consider church planting if I had received it. So I give you a portable church in a bag. To my student advisor, toughest critic, mentor, and my friend, Dr. Kevin Peacock. For those who do not have the privilege of learning biblical Hebrew from you, uh, I should share that you have titled your handbook when I took it, Walking Through the Valley of the Shadow of Death. 
So for those students that might need a little encouragement, um, yes. Yeah. Uh, hold on there. Uh, however, uh, <laughs> uh, your other gift is still en route. Uh, I ordered for you a seminary golf shirt. Uh, <laughs> I have witnessed the look of shock from my classmates who usually forget an assignment or a paper that was due. And so on the sleeve of the shirt, uh, on the sleeve of the shirt <laughs> is not your favorite saying, but one that you have used a lot with the students. And it says, it's in the syllabus. <laughs> and because of the fear that you instill, I also put another title on the back of the shirt that says, I am the shadow. <laughs> Lastly, Dr. Rob, we know that your job as our seminary president is a difficult task and there will be many days of praying and eating lots of coffee. Let me at least help you improve your coffee consumption. To all our other professors that have taught and will teach here, thank you for investing in our lives. The work you do here is a factor in God's kingdom growth. And for all of us who will be going out to our tough places where God needs us to be, we hope to represent God to the best of our abilities by applying what we have learned from our time here. In the next two years, I will need to pastor church for pastoral experience for the military to continue on as a chaplain in the Canadian Forces. I hope to become chaplain general someday so that I can become an agent of change in Canada. As we will need prayer support for these endeavors, we have prayer cards for your fridge if you'd like them. Michelle and I owe both, uh, and I both owe some of our best and challenging times of our lives to this school. We met here, began our family here, also faced several health challenges here, and I've come close to death more times than anyone should be comfortable with. Still through it all, for me, it is just more of a confirmation that God is not done with me yet. I cannot thank my family who couldn't be here, but also for all of you uh, for being our true family in Christ and walking with us through it all while we have been here. Please feel free to keep in touch with us. Our final request from our family here is to please keep us in prayer and for all that we accomplish, to God be the glory. Thank you, students, graduates, for sharing with us. I want to take just a moment. Um, you've heard a lot of thanks tonight for people, but I, I would like, um, and I'd like to ask you to hold your applause, but if you um, currently teach at our school or have taught at our school, serve on the faculty in some way, and I know we have Dr. Cobb here who uh, has joined us even though he retired several years ago, would you please stand if you have taught or are teaching at our school? Okay, hold your applause. And um, um, now, if you serve on the staff of our school, would you please stand? If you serve on the staff or have served on the staff, I'm looking right at you, Sabina. <coughs> okay, if you have volunteered for our school, would you stand and join them, please? We have lots of, we have several that ha have, have volunteered for our school. Yes, thank you. Could we give them a round of applause? Thank you so much. Our academic dean, Dr. Steve Booth, I've heard him say many, many times that uh, we consider it a, tr a sacred trust when God brings uh, these men and women to study in our school. It's a sacred trust that we, we take very seriously. Um, and that trust does not end when these students finish their degree program here. We continue to pray for them regularly and to support them and uh, we want to see God's best in their lives. Uh, and so thank you, students, for giving us the opportunity um, to invest in your lives for all these years. 
I want to introduce to you now our, our president, Dr. Rob Blackaby. Um, he has served as uh, the president of our school. Uh, he is now starting his 13th year in that capacity, um, has served as faithfully, sacrificially. Um, I, I can't think of anyone that is better suited to lead our school, and he's going to share a few words with you right now. I want to speak to our graduates and and perhaps by extension all of us. And I do want to invite you or encourage you to be part of our commencement service tomorrow. Our our guest speaker is actually arriving tonight. Um, Danny Aiken is coming from Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary, and he will be our commencement speaker tomorrow. If you've not heard him speak, you you need to hear him speak because by hearing him speak, you'll hear his heart. And his heart is resonating with what we're doing here in Canada at this school. Uh, but we gather with you, graduands, to celebrate a milestone. You've spoken about it to your spouses. You've spoken about it here in testimony. You've spoken about it to friends and family. And uh, it, it is worthy of celebration. And so we acknowledge your hard work. Some of us have seen up close and personal how hard you've worked and how diligent you've been and how conscientious you are when you know that there's an assignment you don't want to just hand it in for a grade you want to get something out of it and suck out of the very bone the marrow of what God intends for you to take away so we, we acknowledge your hard work and and really we say God thank you for bringing these students here thank you for giving them to us for such a time as this and uh, you know it's, it's with mixed feelings because I'm the ethics professor and so it puts me in an ethical dilemma. Right around this time of year, we have these backroom meetings where we know if we fail you, you'll have to stay. <laughs> but we can't. We've got to let you go. And you've borne witness in very fine ways tonight as to the reasons why. It's been our joy to journey with you and to share life with you. We believe life changes here. We believe that when you give a portion of your life to this worthy and honorable endeavor of studying God's word and allowing him to press in on, his, on your character, uh, it, it changes who you are. It changes who your family is. You may be sick of hearing me say it, but we really do believe at the very core of our being, we're pulling you towards loving God, loving his word, and loving his people. There is no higher calling than that. Tomorrow you'll join a growing number of alumni who now literally stretch around the globe. And wherever you go, we are still family. And we will promise to pray for you at least every Tuesday, but often many days in between. Last year I spoke out of Philippians chapter 2, and I can't get away from it, so I'm going to speak again this year because this is what Paul writes and it resonates with our heart when he says so then my dear friends just as you've always obeyed not only in my presence but now even more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is God who's working in you enabling you both to desire and to work out his good purpose do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may be blameless and pure, children of God who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation, among whom you shine like stars in the world. Hold firmly to the message of life. Then I can boast in the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. Paul captures our heart. God will entrust an assignment to you once he's got your character where it needs to be. And a lot of your time here at school has been working on your character, but you're not done yet. He'll work on our character till the grave. And when we hear good stories from the field, when we hear from wherever God flings you that there is a kingdom activity happening there, here's a kingdom participant who's pushing back darkness, then we feel like we haven't run or labored in vain. You know, we're with you. When Paul says to work out 
your salvation. He's, he's exhorting you and I to finish it well to carry to conclusion, to apply to its fullest consequence what God has given to you. And in these years with us, you've begun to un unpack all of the richness of what that means in your personal life. One of great Christian leaders, J.H. Jowett, said, ministry that it costs nothing accomplishes nothing. We know that where you're going comes with a price tag. We haven't been naive about the price tag in our lives, and we hope to have never led you to believe there won't be a price tag in your life either. One of my favorite devotional commentators who just recently passed, Warren Worsby, said, if there's to be any blessing, there must be some bleeding. Paul doesn't admonish us to retreat from the world and go into a spiritual isolation ward. It's only as we're confronted with the needs and the problems of real life that we can begin to become more like Christ. So the principle here is God must work in us before he works through us. So I leave you with this. As you embrace this next chapter of your life, actively pursue the will of God. As if it's the very meat that you must eat and the drink that you must have on a daily basis. Promote your spiritual life and realize the virtues of the Christian life because God has worked into you his amazing grace and his perfect salvation. Now work it out in the midst of a watching world. I know that uh, most of you are here tonight because you heard there was desserts at the end. And uh, so we are going to be getting to that uh, very soon. I want to thank um, those that sponsored uh, our event tonight um, for the Midwest Baptist Association, uh, DK and Brenda Hale. Thank you so much for sponsoring the event. I want to thank uh, Kathy Dell uh, and my staff and many volunteers that have worked to get uh, our, our evening ready with desserts and things. Um, and I'm going to ask for your help in just a second. If you could help us by stacking chairs and, and moving most of those toward the wall over on this side. And it, it, for those of you that are really smart, if you could uh, leave some in kind of some semicircles that people can, can sit, uh, we would appreciate it greatly. Um, <clears throat> also, I want you to know that we always order some gluten-free uh, desserts. I believe those are marked at the back of the room, and so if, uh, if uh, you need that, we've, we've tried to provide for that need. Um, <clears throat> let me also uh, just mention, uh, at the back of, of, of the room over on the, my left is uh, going to be David Ong. David serves as our admissions director, and uh, there may be some of you tonight that uh, you've been inspired by what you've heard, and you've realized, hey, maybe I should take a class. Or maybe I should uh, do a degree. You're never too young or too old. Well, you might be a little too young, some of you. Um, but uh, we would love to talk to you about that. And David, where are, David, where are you? David's right there in the back. See David if you'd like more information about studying at our school. I want to thank you so much for being part of this. And now I'm going to call on uh, Russ Falk, um, if you would come. Uh, Russ, you heard from Russ. Russ received the, pa the Lifeway Pastoral Leadership Award um, a couple of weeks ago at our school, and we've asked him to give our closing prayer. Would you bow with me? Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you for the testimonies that we could hear from all the graduates, uh, graduands, myself included. Uh, Father, we thank you for the school, for uh, the fact that you call people continuously to this place to train for ministry. Uh, Father, thank you for the faithfulness of the professors and staff. Thank you for their love for you, for their love for us, uh, for how they teach us and train us. Uh, Father, you've heard the, the testimonies about what you've done in people's lives over the years that they've been here. Uh, we thank you for that. Uh, my prayer is that that wouldn't uh, stop once we're done here after graduation, that you might continue to work in our lives in an even more powerful way in the years ahead as we step out into the world and minister uh, for your name's sake and for the sake of your kingdom. Uh, Father, would you go with, us, go with us as graduates? Would you guard us and protect us? Uh, would you keep us from stumbling along the way? Uh, would you keep us along the straight path that we wouldn't turn to the right or the left? Uh, that we might hear your voice behind us, guiding us all the time. 
um, by your grace that we might stay in tune with you and that you would keep us from the many pitfalls that there are in ministry. Uh, Father, thank you for your grace for us. Thank you for your love towards us uh, that you demonstrated in your son Jesus. And I pray that uh, over all the years that you allow us to continue to live on this earth, that we might fall more and more in love with you and that that would be expressed to a world that's watching. Uh, we thank you for these things and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.